Now, with one of the worst summers in the club's history, off the back of the Super League drama, Barcelona have found themselves in a massive problem financially. With over a billion euros in debt, having to sell off all of their best assets, including losing Lionel Messi, it's time to see if we can rebuild Barcelona on FM22. Yes, we're back, Dad. Barcelona yeah. rebuild, a massive club. And I would never really have thought we'd have to do a rebuild no. for Barcelona. No. But here we are. What a mad summer it was, to be honest, when all of that came out in the news. Yeah. And it's kind of embedded into the game as well. There is a massive debt. So let's take a look at that straight away because even though there's 30 million pound in the bank, there is 919 million pound debt that somehow, if you take on Barcelona, you're gonna to have to wipe away. There's so many bank loans, it's and unbelievable. Yeah, I was reading as well that they've got a, a kit sponsor by Nike, 155 million per season. That wouldn't even pay for Messi's wages last year. <laughs> no, it didn't. That's how bad that is. <laughs> so, I mean, this is where we are. And, and unfortunately, at the start of the game, you're given no transfer budget, no wage budget, and very little transfer revenue percentage-wise. However, we did manage to get somebody off the books, which I was surprised we did, and actually make a sign-in. So let's look at that one. Yeah, somehow I managed to get rid of Coutinho. Now, a bit of a troublemaker, I think, since he's been at Barcelona. Yeah, it seems like it, And the it? wages that he was on I liked was him when he was in the Premier League. He was so good in the yeah. Premier League. Just never really worked for him at Barcelona. No. And, he looked, and yet he looked like a perfect player. Yeah. And he's Brazilian. I mean, we know the history well, with Barcelona. Talking about Brazilians, Brazilians you've got Ronaldo. Yeah. 47 goals in 49 games he Just scored. ridiculous. Yeah. And then Ziva, the um, Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho, one of yeah. my favourite ever players, to be honest. Absolutely I mean, incredible. At, at Barcelona. Magicians, yeah, well, brilliant, really, yeah, brilliant, absolutely. Brilliant strikers, yeah. And yet, when when he when he went there, I thought, you know, he's going in there with Neymar, he's going there with Messi. What a team that they're about to accumulate. Oh, couldn't ask for a better team, mate. Never really. worked with him. But thankfully, I mean, he, we've actually sent him back to Neymar and Messi because he's <laughs> he's gone to PSG. Sure, yeah. How they've managed to afford him, I don't know. But we're not going to question it. He has actually moved for thirty million pound as well. So we got transfer money and we got rid of the wages so we were able to bring somebody in but that transfer money was very little from what we were given out of that 30 million and because of the amount of youngsters in the team there's a lot of positions that i didn't really want to fill but there is one position that cdm role where there's not a youngster ready yet but there might be in the future. Yeah. So I've brought in Eric Pulgar. Now, the reason why he cost me roughly about £10 million from Fiorentina, 27 years of age, Chilean, kind of like a CDM. Busquets is fantastic, but he's slightly on the aging side yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Stamina, natural fitness wise, we need a lot of um, we need a lot of rotation mm. in there. So I've brought him in. He can play CDM, he can play midfield, and he's got some really good fundamental attributes. At the start of the game, I think he's a bit of a steal, to be honest, for £10 million. So he is our only transfer this summer. But of course, there was quite a lot of transfers that came in from Barcelona and ones that kind of left as well. This is what we're looking at for the start of the season. A narrow diamond. I'm not really a big fan of narrow formations, no. but when I looked at the team, there were certain wingers which either out on loan, like Francisco Trincao, so we'll have him back next season, but like Depay, who can play up top instead obviously he came in as a free transfer he plays well as a striker in fact i think it's his favorite role yeah. at leon he was very good at front there dutch i mean again barcelona their history with dutch players Definitely, yeah i mean look at Jordan cruyff johan cruyff yeah. unbelievable oh. legend at barcelona I mean, as a player and a manager well, he, he became their favorite player very very quickly when he joined them because he he announced that he he didn't want to speak well he had the chance to sign for real madrid and he chose Real, uh, Barcelona instead. Straight away into Straight the Straight away favourite. Yeah, yeah. straight away. When when you become a player like that and then and then further like down the road, he becomes their manager, isn't he? Yeah, and, and what a manager he was. Well, he kind of introduced the, the tiki-taka style. That's right, yeah. And it, it did say that it, it, the the best team came from the way he, he taught the, the talent players and all that. And the, one of the first talent players to come out of the, the academy that he had set up. Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola yeah. Unbelievable. They were their oh, best ever manager. Yeah. In well, the end, he apparently going by the facts, of what they say, the best ever Barcelona team was under Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I mean, I'm and not surprised. Won, they won 14 trophies in four years. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. You can't argue with that, can you? No. I mean, there is another Dutchman in the team as well. We've got Frankie de Jong, of course, signed recently from Ajax. There's that connection again. Yeah. Ajax to Barcelona. And we've got young Gavi, who has burst onto the scene ever so recently. I mean, I've seen him play in the Champions League the other night. 17 years of age. He's insane. He is, yeah. Really good player. And that's like, I mean, Pedri. Again, he's only 18, and he seems like he's been around for ages now. Yeah. He's burst into the scene. I think he played like 70 games last year. Mm. Ridiculous amount. Barely had a rest, and he's back 
back in it as well. He looks fantastic as well. We've got the halfback role. That's the role that Eric Polgar, Busquets, they're going to fill. And there's a youngster in the youth team we're going to we're going to keep a close eye on because he could be perfect for it. Ansu Fati plays up top. We've got a Tracatista role. I quite like introducing that. Centre-back wise, we've got Eric Garcia. Of course, he was signed on a free transfer from Manchester City. Alba, been there for a while now. He's 32, playing that complete wing-back role on the left-hand side. We've got a wing-back role on the right. Not filled. We've got a few players who can play there. And to Stegen, who, to be honest, has been quite solid for Barcelona for a number yeah. of years now, 29 years of age. Right, so the first season. Ooh. Yeah, second place to Real Madrid. I mean, I've Ten seen points. I've seen it be worse, to be honest, well, because of the situation they're in. It is in. worse at this present moment. Exactly. <laughs> um, and that is probably the reason why Kuman was obviously sacked. And yeah. by the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be Xavi that's bring, well, being brought in. What a Can't argue with that. What a, what a legend at Barcelona. Yeah, a legend. And yeah. not, it looks like he's like embedded what the way he played under Pep Guardiola and like managers after into that Al Saad team I think it's Al Saad correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments yeah. and it looks like that's the way they're playing mm. so it's perfect for Barcelona yeah. but he's bound to, he's bound to uh, bring it into his own team isn't he because if it's worked at where he's played yes. he's going to bring it in for, you know, and try it you know. I mean it, and I'm it requires it certain players though yeah. it requires certain players to have and to coach so, yeah. by the way, if you have any recommendations for future rebuilds, put them down in the comments because we're going to pick the ones which are suggested the most. We're yeah. going to stick them on Patreon. So, page.com forward slash Megaluke Gaming. On one of the lowest tiers, you can vote for future rebuilds. We've got the one set out for the next three or four weeks, but it's the ones in the future that we need yeah. your help with. So, make sure you put them down in the comments and sign up to Patreon and support me as a content creator if you want to vote. So, let's take a deep dive into this because other competitions then knocked out in the quarter final by Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League. We won the Super Copa de España, but I think that's like the Super Cup. Uh, so not, but fifth round by Deportivo Español, which that's our rivals. That's a bad loss is, against yeah. our rivals yeah. Español. And they see it as a bigger derby than what Barca see it, obviously mm. because of the stature of Barca compared to them. But that's a fifth round loss. It's, it's a disappointing season. Yeah. Do you know, I was I read a bit as well about the, you know, the, um, the home games. Yeah. They reckon a lot of their, uh, the people that live in Barcelona don't go to the ground to watch the games they watch it in the bars as they can yeah yeah and most of the ground is filled up with bringing um, tourists tourists yeah I can believe that yeah that's quite strange when you actually, think that it? at the moment it holds 99,300 yeah and it's nearly full every game every <laughs> game it's remarkable really yeah so Squad wise, Memphis Depay was the standout scorer of the team. Ansu Fati managed to get 21 though. So there's that strike partnership that we looked at earlier on. Uh, maybe it's too narrow. Yeah. Maybe that's what what's, what's what's causing us there. But we didn't necessarily have the players to play a wide formation and to, to stick with it. We've had some players that like, we've got Sergio Aguero, but he's not really good enough. And there's certain things in the match engine that Sergio Aguero has, comes deep to get the ball, being yeah. one of them as a player trait, just doesn't really work in me. Well, he though. is, he yeah. As much as running around, he's going to... Constantly injured as well. That's well, that's a big problem for him. Probably when you get a little bit older though, wouldn't it? Yeah, Jordi Alba, 18 assists. He was the kind of a standout team player, to be honest, because it looks like he had the highest average rating in behind a couple of other players. I mean, De Stegen and Ronald Arojo. Ronald Arojo was a fantastic season. Yeah. Centre back, 16 goals. He looks absolutely oh, fantastic. That's good, yeah. um, a good youngster, 23 year old Uruguayan. They like the Uruguayans as well, yeah, of course, do, yeah. Suarez. But it's a new season. We need to bring in some new, fresh blood. Now, season number two, Ronald Arojo is no longer with us. Oh he kicked up such a fuss. Right. Didn't want to sign a new deal, and his contract was running out after the season uh, that we had this season, so we had to say goodbye. I don't think anybody playing for us who don't want to play for us, so let him go. He's gone to Bayern Munich, which probably is a good decision for him, really. Yeah. They're playing fantastic. £50 million pound we still managed to get out of him, despite obviously being in the last year of his contract. Which is not a bad offer, really. Uh, I had to accept it. Obviously, it's going to be a big downfall. He was our best player last year. Yeah. But we have brought in some big names. On top of that £50 million, we managed to accumulate another £28 million later on through the transfer window and some big names going out with huge wages. Samuel Umtiti. Right. Sold him for £2.5 million because his wages were just massive and I thought, just get him off the books. Same as Sergio Aguero. You're talking <laughs> like 275000 maybe even more. P Pjanic. <laughs> Spurs? <laughs> yeah, to Spurs, 9.7 million. Pjanic to Liverpool, again, a massive wage. These guys are valued very high, but I had to reduce the price because of how expensive they are to, to, to pay on a yeah. weekly salary. But we might have, like, although we, like, cut wages a lot, we have signed a megastar. Going by the name of Kylian Mbappe. Ooh, now, hey, hello, hello. that is a fantastic signing. And, of course, 
It's a free transfer because he just refuses he to sign to PSG. So no matter how many players we're shipping out to PSG, we took their best player. He wouldn't really leave this season, did he? Exactly, in yeah. In real life, I think. It did look like it was going to be Real Madrid. There were a lot of clubs yeah. after him. I've had to pay him 275k, which in the grand scheme of things is not that bad. No, no. The amount that we've managed to get out. Now, I personally think he would be best at used as a striker. I think that's definitely because of his yeah. pace. Yeah, definitely. Wasted on the wing, to yeah. be honest. Oh, yeah. French strikers in the past, Thierry for Barcelona there's yeah. a few connections here yeah, for different is, yeah. different nations but Kylian Mbappe is definitely an exciting prospect that hopefully we can keep hold of for the rest of this rebuild but he's not the only guy we brought in now I felt like we needed some extra legs at right back Pedro Porro comes in from Manchester City now Spanish so he kind of works in that he never played for Barcelona before which is very rare you see a Spanish player overseas and they haven't played for Barcelona yeah, there, true, yeah. through their youth academy at some point yeah. so this is the first time uh, we bring him to Barcelona but I think he's a fantastic right back, especially a wing back. Fantastic going forward, like crossing and dribbling. And when you have a team like Barcelona, who you expect to have the most possession, you want kind of an attacking fullback. Yeah, definitely, yeah. £40 million pound was the price. There was a lot of money, but of course we sold a lot of money and we got that free transfer in. Yeah. George Cuenca is kind of a really good bargain pickup because although he doesn't look amazing yet, he has a great potential on the game. I've seen him look unbelievable. And we picked him up for £1.4 million pound from Villarreal. Yeah. Again, he used to be a player for Barcelona, yeah. so we just brought go. him back. Yeah. And a Brazilian striker. Ooh, we like we like Brazilians, our Brazilians don't we? Yeah. Yes. Uh, he is fantastic. We've we've seen Brenner in previous rebuilds, not in this version, but in FM21. He's going to be a backup because I think we've got so many good players, especially now killing Mbappe's here as a striker. Yeah. But what a backup he is oh, yeah. as a striker. I mean, fantastic to bring him in. 22 years of age, and we picked him up for a bargain price of just 3.7 million pounds oh, from Cincinnati. Yeah. Unbelievable. 15 goals and 26 games in the MLS last year. So we are changing formation, and we're going with some width. Now, a 4-3-3, this is what I think Barcelona have been playing for a number of years now, especially under Guardiola when we mentioned the best ever team potentially yeah. with that inverted forward slash winger in Lionel Messi, what he was playing. We've got exactly the same on that right-hand side, somebody who I think Ansu Fati would definitely really fit in that role. Because if we do look at Ansu Fati, he plays really well on both sides. He is right-footed, so p potentially more on that side, but that's where Depay likes to play. Yeah. I think Ansu Fati would be better off playing on that right. But what I have done is not selected these players anyway, because we have so many players who can chop and change between those, those positions. We've also got a Roman playmaker, a centre midfielder on attack, and I have introduced the youngster, Nico. I mentioned him before. Yeah. I think it's time. 20 years of age. I think he's fantastic. And in real life, he has been starting games as well. I left him last season down in the Barcelona B. We can see here, 2021-22. He played 34 appearances, scored one, got nine assists, had a great average rating. And he did actually play for us a couple of times. Three games, two goals, a 7.3. So when the it. assistant manager's picking him, he's doing the job, he deserved the call up. Yeah. It's about time. Other roles, Pedro Porro is going to slot in there. we got Sergio Roberto, but I think he can fill in at centre midfielder should we really need him, and to Stegen in net. The rest of the positions, we're leaving it as it is. But of course, this is the Qatar World Cup here. We've played a lot of games already. We yeah. started off with a bit of a revenge tour with an 8-1 win against Ooh, Espanyol. That is a good one, isn't it? That is a great one. Gabby yeah. getting two, Ansu Fati getting two, so a lot of our youngsters. I mean, we've been on a tear, Dad, if I'm honest, because Real Betis was a 5-1 victory. We played Real Madrid in an El Clasico, and we won 4-1. Yes, oh, Mbappe yeah. getting that one, Pedri, De Jong, Memphis Depay. Another 4-1 victory here against Cadiz and Tenerife. We kind of took our foot off the gas, just a 2-0 yeah. win against Tenerife, but there we go. I wonder if they'll do a, a, um, a long run that they've done a record at the moment. Unbeaten games is 43 in that league. 43 games yeah. unbeaten. It's not bad, is it? Not, especially when you consider that's in a league with Real Madrid, yeah. Atletico Madrid, Valencia, teams like that. So we've got a difficult draw in the Champions League as well. I think we'd highlight it. Man City and Inter Milan in the same group. That's going to be very easy, tricky. Yeah. I wonder if Pep Guardiola will still be manager there as well. It'll be quite interesting to see yeah. that one. We'll, we'll check yeah. that at the end of the season. So, second yes. season and we've bagged it. Get in. We've got the lead Eleven straight points. away. Yes. 11 points dominated it, to be honest. Yeah. Memphis Depay with 28 goals this season. Second right. season in the row, he's top scorer. Yeah. Where is Kylian Mbappe? Yeah. Where what has happened him? there? So let's take a look more into the league. We had a fantastic end of the season, only dropping one game there. 
uh, a loss to Granada, but by then it kind of looks like we already had it yeah, nailed. Yeah. Maybe it was because we were in other competitions. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a no. Real Madrid did get their own back on us. A quarter-final loss to Real Madrid across two legs. Uh, a semi-final loss to Atletico Madrid in the Copa del Rey. We've got the league. Let's just hope that Real Madrid did not win the Champions League. It's being played between Liverpool and Manchester City. Right. Now, we've played Manchester City in our group. Their manager is still Pep Guardiola. Guardiola. How did those results go? So, then? let's take a look at the schedule and see. So, it did not go well for us because at home we lost 1-0 to Manchester City. Erling Haaland scored a penalty, a big signing for them, Ooh. obviously. And when we played them away, Kylian Mbappe rescued a point after, to be fair, Haaland scored in the 90th minute. All right. We scored in the 93rd Third minute. Yeah. So, but two red cards in that game as well. We were we had a red card a lot longer than them from the first half. We didn't necessarily play very well in the Champions League, and I'm quite surprised we managed to scrape through. We did have a 7-1 win though against Inter Milan. That's a massive victory, isn't really, it? Really, that home game against Man City probably cost us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, finishing top of the group, and yeah. then obviously we've. I mean, it didn't matter too much. We played Leon in the next round, so we did go through that round, yeah. and it was against Real Madrid, a one-all draw to begin with, and a three-one loss. Oh, where Gerard yeah. Piquet's playing now. The problem is with that, Gerard Piquet is very slow, not very strong anymore because he's thirty-six. Yeah. One of the downsides I think about football manager is that their physicals drop off way too much. Mm. Like thirty-six-year-old Gerard Piquet. He's not going to have nine strength. No. If anything, he's going to be stronger. Yeah. He might not be as quick. I dare say he's a bit quicker than four acceleration, but still, I don't think he's going to be that that Well, probably that weak. Cristiano Ronaldo, isn't it? I mean, yeah, he's a unit. Like yeah. He's he's quick, he's strong, yeah. and, he's, and he's 36. So mm. there's one thing that I do dislike about Football Manager is how much those physicals do decline. Now, goals-wise, we've seen Depay had the most, 28. Mbappe only had 21. Now, the reason why I think this might have been is if we look at Mbappe's form, he played from the left more than, than any other position. So that striker position, which I think he would be best suited to in Depay, probably be best suited on the left. I think we need to secure them in yeah. those roles next time yeah, I mean, we've got to, yeah. to make sure we get the best out of Mbappe. We cannot we cannot go with just a full season with him playing on the left and only getting 21 goals no. and eight assists. I mean, to be honest as well, I expect to win that league. Yes, yes. It's the Champions League that we're after. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the target of the rebuild, really. Yeah, win the Champions yeah. League again. We've done the league already. Assist-wise, Pedro Porro was a fantastic pickup because he got himself 15 assists and a 7.29 average rating. Ansu Fati had a fantastic season as well. What we think was on that right-hand side, 14 goals, 12 assists. So the only big notable out is Antoine Griezmann. Now, the big reason for that is because he has, would you believe it, a 70 or 80% pay increase in his second season, which puts him on on over a million pound a week. There's no That's chance I'm going to play him, no. pay him that much. So he had to go. Yeah. Uh, he's only out on loan at Milan and they're not paying much of that wage, if I'm honest. Only paying 115 grand a week and a little bit on top as well. So we are still paying such a, a huge money, amount, yeah. unfortunately. But that it just has to be. Registration-wise, you have to be under a certain salary now in the La Liga. And if I if I pick Griezmann, then I can't pick half the team. Well, in real life, I think that's why he's gone back to... Um, Atletico, Atletico Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, yeah, Barcelona because of that new wage. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And this is why it's caused them so much problems. They've made so many bad decisions in the past few years with certain players like coming in who they have no intention of playing as a first team player, but they are offering ridiculous money yeah. and it's cost them in the long run. They've lost Messi. Mm. On the ins though, I felt like we needed some fresh legs on the left. Jordi Alba now is 33, starting to lose some physicals, unfortunately. This man, Owen Vindal, who is a Dutch, again. Yeah. From AZ Alkmaar this time, though. Very good left back on the game. He looks absolutely phenomenal. We have bought him for £35 million, and he has like some extra add-ons, like percentage of next fee and stuff like that. Uh, but unbelievable player, to be honest, to play on that left-hand side. He will do for the rest of the rebuild. And Sebastian Bornau, a Belgian centre-back. Now, I don't really know much about this guy, but what I do know is that he comes from Wolfsburg, and obviously Wolfsburg managed to get Champions League qualification. Yeah. recently so he can't be that bad if I'm honest 40 million pound we have signed him for and his attributes looks absolutely fantastic looks like a solid player definitely someone that we need because of course we lost Ronald Arojo last season we didn't really replace him no and we're playing people like Gerard Piquet and I dare say it's probably costing us yeah definitely yeah. so definitely bringing in someone like Sebastian Bornau will help and he goes alongside Presnel Kimbempe. We have signed Presnel from PSG. He is a left-sided centre-back. We've already got Longley, who again is French, but we are playing, I mean, we've bought it for £42 million from PSG. Obviously, they took a lot of our players. We're starting to take some back. Uh, and then, I mean, the matches between Barcelona and PSG. Oh, well... 
Barcelona have got the record of being the only team ever to come back from 4 0 down. I mean, that, in the Champions League. What a game that was as oh, well. Well, it finished off the goal six scorers one, in it, it? as well. Messi and Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> now they're at the other, the other team. I mean, I can remember watching that game and it was 6 1 on the night, yeah. 6 5 on aggregate, but. I think they scored two or three goals in the last in the 90 two plus minutes. minutes. Two, three, yeah. yeah, what a game it was! I mean, it, well, everybody had them done, didn't they? Yeah. I think it was after 85 minutes or something like that. PSG scored or something, and it was something that you just thought done, 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 dusted. Yeah. Nope. That's all they needed is that one goal. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, bang, 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 game over. Barcelona, Barcelona through. Free. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff. <laughs> Now the final signing is a Turkish goalkeeper, Altai by India. Uh, I think it's Fenerbahce, he is, £17 million. He's their first choice goalkeeper, but to be honest, he's actually happy to come in as a backup for us. We've oh, got to right. Stegen. Yeah. Obviously, he was a fantastic goalkeeper. We lost the goalkeeper that we had as a backup just to a free transfer, so we brought him in for £17 million. Very good backup. I mean, to be honest, he's quite an elite level goalkeeper, so he will do for, for sure. Tactically, we're staying the same. Vindal is going to be playing on the left every single game. Born out on that right-hand side of centre defence. I don't want Jarrah PK there. We've no. got two really good left-footed centre-backs you can play there. Poro, I think we need to nail him down there. To Stegen nails the goalkeeper position and then I've made sure we've kept the front three. Mbappe playing up front. That needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, Fatty gonna... from the right-hand side, the pie from the left. Not a good chance this time. Yeah, Nico keeps his position there. And let's take a look at Nico because he is progressing really well. Last season, a seven rating. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Growing as a youngster, only 21 years of age. He's coming into the team really nicely. Growing, developing, that's what we need. People from the, the youth academy, that's what Barcelona's known for. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Now, results that have happened before we go on because, of course, now with the new transfer, deadline day feature we have been playing a few games and then simulating from transfer deadline day onwards we've played two so far the first was a 2-0 victory against Atletico Madrid not bad at all Real no. Sociedad again which is a very difficult game they've got a solid team this yeah. year a 3-1 victory so two really difficult games we've managed to overcome them Valencia next as well. Yeah, we lost three one against Leeds. I know. In yeah, a friendly. In a friendly. And oh, Mbappe scored. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three one. Three one loss. Unbelievable. So at the end of the third season then, and we have retained. Oh, and to be honest, we continued well. it, yeah. Let's look at the elephant in the room though, because if we take a look at our player stats, Kylian Mbappe, 67 goals. It was the right decision to yep. put him up there, the Definitely. highest average rating as well. And it was a good decision to put Depay on the left because he got the most assists. Fantastic season. Had to work, didn't it? Had to work. It did, yeah. Only a B from the from the board. We mustn't have done very well in the cups again. <laughs> Champions there, 97 points in total. Three losses, Sporting, Athletic, Bilbao and Sevilla. And then four draws. Not a bad season whatsoever. No. Talking about Bilbao as well, three teams have never been relegated from La Liga. Barcelona, Real Madrid, and the other one was Atletico Bilbao, and I was surprised with that. Yeah, that is. I mean, what's most surprised about that is they're only allowed to play Basque players. Yeah. So they don't make any other sign-ins outside of Basque players, yeah. even Spanish players. Well, most people have got to think of Atletico Madrid, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. But you no, know, the they've been relegated. They, recently, or, yeah. I think. Like, within yeah. the last 20, 30 years, Atletico Madrid. So competitions then. We were the runners-up of the Copa del Rey. Champions League is to be played against Manchester City and Liverpool again. Yeah. Again, yeah. Um, let's see how we did in the Champions League. I don't know why it hasn't shown us. Quarter final, that's where we lost against Manchester City, unfortunately. Pep Guardiola done us again. One. He's done us again. Is he still there? Surely. No, no way. way. Jurgen Klopp hey. against Liverpool. And they're playing against Liverpool. Uh, yeah. What happened who's, there? Who's Liverpool manager? Pep Guardiola. Hey. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's so many times that happens. Well, who would be sacked then? I am sure it must be Guardiola who leaves. So, Pep Guardiola left the manager role. They offered the job to Klopp and he took it. No. Because then, if you let's look at Liverpool's manager history. Jurgen Klopp left the manager role. So he wasn't sacked. And they so they just swapped. I don't believe That's it. That's so random, isn't it? I mean, what Champions League final? <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to check that at the start of next season to see because they both reached the Champions League final. That, well, that In their would first never season? Have happened. No. Never have happened that two teams would play in the Champions League final, swap managers. And, and then play against each other again. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. That just goes to show, though, I think, that they're two of the best managers yeah. right now. I think they are. Those two on Tuchel, I think. Yeah. Definitely in the Premier League. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And unbelievable stuff, really. Yeah. So, after all of that, let's take a look at some goals. Because 67 goals Kylian Mbappe scored in just 55 appearances and 13 assists. A total of 80 goal contributions 
in 55 appearances, really? that's Lionel Messi level, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like Messi and Ronaldo level yeah. when they were in their prime. 100%. Uh, Depay, 22 goals, 30 assists. That's insane as well. 52 goal contributions in 54 games. Depay's done really well. Uh, Antu Fati's done really well as well. Uh, average rating a 7.65 for Kylian Mbappe, 6.2 for Depay. He's he's almost, he must be like, oh, for God's sake, like I do everything here, and yet <laughs> Mbappe just getting all yeah. the plaudits. But fair play, when you score 67 goals in a season, you're going to get all the plaudits. So that Champions League was won by <laughs> Manchester City and Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. Brilliant. So the season before Manchester City won it oh. with Pep, they've now won it with Jurgen, Jurgen Klopp. Klopp. I bet oh, Liverpool God. are hating oh, that. No. Oh, you win the Champions League, then we steal your manager. <laughs> and oh, then you on. win it again with Klopp's Klopp's manager. And then you win it with, with our manager. <laughs> that is unbelievable. That is amazing. I like it. Right, a quick look at the finances then. We've got a lot in our transfer budget here. Our overall balance, 145. We've got £70 million in the transfer budget still. Without That's after transfers too. Deadline has passed. Pass. Debts and loans, we've almost halved it. Yeah, it's good then. So the results have been paying off. Getting rid of that wage bill, yeah. that's been paying off. Who have we brought in though? Because I think our wage bill has, has started to rise again. Yeah. Now, Jurgen Klopp has been busy as well because Ansu Fati had a release clause of £124 million and they came in and matched it. Did they? I couldn't do anything about it. No, you can't. No. I offered him a new contract. He didn't want to stay. And I don't Fatty think our board would let us turn that down, would they? Probably not. No, no not with the debt that we're in. That's no. probably the reason why our debts are starting to be cleared, yeah. to be honest. Uh, but yeah, what a servant for the club as well in a very short period of time. Uh, he's only 21. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable, isn't it? So they've got a long time to use him, and he is a fantastic player, by yeah. the way. But also, Pep Guardiola's been busy. <laughs> because Frankie de Jong also had a release clause in his contract which was slightly bigger than Ansu Fati. 140 million. Hey. I know we're raking in the money. 216 million of two players. <laughs> yeah, from the two, the two we Champions League. We can afford to buy Messi back, can we? I know, I mean, <laughs> how we're expected to try and do well in the Champions League when the Champions League winners and runners up just keep buying all yeah. of our best players. But we can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Then, but their race courses are there for a reason in yeah. Spain. This is that reason. And that's not the only names going out to Stegen. Going to Chelsea, 40 million pound. I mean, he is like, what's he, 32? now he's still a decent goalkeeper and 32 yeah. still young for a goalkeeper but I think we've we've got a decent goalkeeper and I've brought somebody else in and Eric Polgar it's about time he left we've got Nico in now he's playing that CDM role Plus gets is a little bit aging we've got a few players who can play that role 9.75 million I have been very busy though now, Joshua Kimmich has come in. One of probably the world's most underrated players, yeah. I would say, from Bayern Munich. I mean, Lewandowski gets all the all the rewards, yeah, shame, there, but, yeah. but Kimmich, I think, is a workhorse. He, I mean, Guardiola transformed him from a right back into a centre midfielder. Yeah. And what a centre midfielder and a right back he is. We have spent a lot of money. Work right, like, you don't get better than that. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's got so many Stamina. 20s, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, he's probably got the most 20s on the game now that Messi is more than likely has retired or about to retire. We've bought for 80 million pound it's a lot of money but of course we we shipped a lot of yeah. money out or so, a yeah. lot of money in to be honest so from by minute we have brought him in he was on the transfer list as well so the goalkeeper Elian Meslier I like him. yeah I mean it's a fantastic good. goalkeeper for Leeds good young, young goalkeeper yeah, so when the bid was coming in for to Stegen and he kind of kicked up a fuss that we didn't accept the bid so I was like well I want you to be my number one goalkeeper yeah. I looked and see who was on the market and I seen that we could potentially get him so I thought I, I'm, I'm happy with that. He did cost us 81 million though. That's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Double the amount that we paid for to Stegen at the same time. But I mean, he's not going to get anywhere with Leeds. He's not exactly playing very well with Leeds right now. We're going to win you some titles, Ilian. But our boy Jude Bellingham has joined us. Oh, I like him. Now that is a great good sign, English isn't it? player. So yeah. yeah I mean, I felt like as want. soon as I seen that he wanted, because this is, I think it's a deadline day transfer that we have made. And when it came up saying he is looking to see if there's anybody who wants to put in an offer, I'm like, yes, please, Jim. Yeah. I would like to do that. I'd like to bring you in. I'm surprised though, I'm sure he wanted to go to the Premier League, but. Yeah, maybe he does in real life. Barcelona's well, class Barcelona, midfield. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very hard to turn down, especially when we've been on a bit of a rampage as yeah. well. 93 million pounds is what he's gonna cost us, but I think definitely it'll be worth it. Danilo is a Brazilian centre midfielder that we brought in. Maybe just, just like a bit of a backup, to be honest. Bit of a squad play. Can play in a number of different roles and a number of different positions as well, which I kind of like. So definitely bringing him in for a very cheap cost as well. From the Brazilian league, £11.5 million release clause. If other people are going to match release clauses, we're going to match them as yeah, well. But especially when they're that low. Oh yeah, when they're £11 million, <laughs> not bad. Now, another midfielder coming in, and I think this is what will take us from just a team that is struggling in the Champions League but winning the league to a team that will be challenging 
for that Champions League, Frank Kesse. Because centre midfielder wise, we've got Jude Bellingham who's created. This guy is more of like an industrial midfielder. Yeah. He's going to be the workhorse. I mean, he's got great. I mean, Kimmich is also that, but I think Kimmich should be better on the, in that right back role as a full back position. This guy, like the tackling, the marking. Work rate. Yeah, the work yeah, rate. Something strength, strength and stamina. Strength 19. Stamina, yeah. Like he's a beast. Be back, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's going to be fantastic for us. From AC Milan, £53 million pound as well. It's an absolute steal, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. Really good signing. Uh, a world class midfielder, again, by description. Good. Send him midfield players are your main core yes, that you need what, that's where your strength got to be I think to be honest we have players like Gavi and stuff who are great creatively but unless we're playing that tiki tacky style which we're not really no. it's we're going to be caught out defensively yeah. this is the type of player that we need yeah just sat in there yeah and finally with Ansu Fati going we needed some more players up front bringing in Alexander Isaac now he plays in the Spanish league already for Real Sociedad 52 million pound he hasn't necessarily been playing that well I don't think they've been playing him in the center which probably is more of a mistake for them to be honest because i think he's fantastic yeah. as a striker great dribbling the pace on him is fantastic he's 6-3 as well great composure decision making good off the ball if, if if i'm honest yes the elite striker is definitely if we didn't have mbappe i'd be thinking we're well, fine we've got alexander isaac to yeah. be honest and in the game he's absolutely mental so we've got two really good strikers now he doesn't really play on the right which may be a problem because Ansu Fati, that's where he filled. Yeah. To counter-attack that, I've changed the tactics slightly. We're going a bit asymmetric. We're going to play this role here, and I think this is where Isaac's going to slip in, in that pressing forward role. Mbappe keeps his role, but he's going to have a mate right next to him. Instead of further out on the wing, which to be honest, we were telling him to sit narrower anyway, he's going to be right there instead. Depay still out on the left. Kimmich is filling that full-back role. We've got Meslier in goal, Vindal at left-back. The rest we're leaving. Kesse comes in. It means that Nico's role in that DM is not guaranteed. And I think that's a good thing yeah. for like longevity in the, in these European competitions. So, the end of the fourth season we've retained again, but this time it was a, a lot close. closer. Yeah. yeah, 93 points. Let's breeze through still it. Take it though, still take yeah, it. we had a loss near the end of the season, which made it a little bit ropey as well to sell to Vigo after being. Atletico Madrid. Other competitions though, this is what's most important because we haven't really done anything no. else in other competitions. And it's so close to being a treble winning team. We've already done that twice. Barcelona? Barcelona, yeah. Won the league, won your major cup, won the Champions League. Yeah. There's one other team that's ever done it. What, doing it once or twice? Done it twice now. Right, okay. Bayern Munich. Pep Guardiola, yeah, was obviously, yeah. I think he did it as well, the mm. treble. Not bad. We had and a chance of doing too. it. Look, we had a chance of doing it. Yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. I mean, who did we lose to? <sighs> Man United. <laughs> no, 5-1 no. as well. Yes, come on. 5-1. 5-1. That, five one. Five one. that right. is outstanding. What a result. Did they Manchester win their league? Sure, that cannot be Oli. That cannot be Oli who's no. done that. No way. Bruno Fernandes gets one. Rashford got one. Oh, Bruno Fernandes got two. Varane gets one as well. Who is in charge of Manchester United? It's still Oli. Hey. Yeah, it's still Oli. I mean, uh, let's hope not for much longer in real life, for <laughs> Christ's sake. Goals wise, then 58 goals in 57, 57 games, games for Kylian Mbappe. And that is to awesome, be, isn't it? it's great considering that Isaac got 46. Yeah. So the front two is getting so many goals in between them, over 100 goals just between the well, two of them. We've done what we wanted to do. We won the cup, we got to the final. Yeah, you know, we're just unlucky, I guess. Yeah, just well, come up five against, one, just come up against unlucky, an unbelievable it? team in the final. <laughs> um, Assist-wise, Kimmich came in and got 22 assists. So that is absolutely fantastic for him. And I think he was up there with the highest average rating. Isaac got the highest average rating this year. Followed by Mbappe, followed by Kimmich. Okay, there's a couple of players going out, one of them being Clement Longley. He's gone to Juve. 30 years of age now, and I think it's a good a good signing well a good sale from yeah, us yeah. 30 million pound for a 30 year old talking of Juventus though yeah Barcelona's biggest crowd they've ever played under was a European game against Bar against Juventus oh really 120,000 Jesus Christ I mean we've been in the new camp yeah I mean, that, that must be without seats, obviously, oh, but that yeah, is... Yeah, it was, yeah. What an atmosphere that must have been. Oh, I'm, I'm so high I mean, up. They, they, they hold 99,000 now. Yeah. Um, but to have 120,000 in there... <sighs> must have been crammed. Oh. Now, the only signing in was for Kyle Tomori. We sold a, a centre-back. We've brought in a centre-back. I think this one's a bit of an upgrade as well. Although yeah. he isn't left-footed, he is predominantly right-footed. He is phenomenal. Yeah. Like, look at the mental attributes on him. Physically, 17 for acceleration and pace. 
we are really pushing it now because everywhere we've got a world class player on the pitch. Yeah. Everywhere that every position we have, maybe not left back. Vindal is kind of like a good, he's a great player, but not an elite player. I don't think. Seventy million pound tomorrow we've brought him in for, and he scored already in one game. That's a good. Good price as well. Yeah, £70 million for a world-class yeah. centre-back is not bad at all. From AC Milan again, we're pinching a few of their players. So we're pretty much sticking with the same tactic and we're only selecting Meslier in goal, Depay, Mbappe and Isaac. The rest we're leaving. But like I say, we've got so many great players now. We're inundated with fantastic defenders and midfielders yeah. that we don't really need to select them. We can let the assistant manager just kind of rotate if needs be. If somebody's tired, we've got a world-class player who can fit in that reel. Talk about fantastic players and who's your favourite Barcelona player of all time? Of really? all time, there's been a few to be honest. I mean, it's got to be probably Ronaldinho, yeah. but I, I think as a fan, as my favourite player that's ever played for Barcelona, that's a different one because I think Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo R9 is probably my favourite player that's played for them, but not for Barcelona because he didn't really play for as long, although he obviously was great, but mm. Ronaldinho for me, yeah. Mine's, mine's got to be Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker? Yeah. Gary That's a good Lineker. call, to be fair. I, I do mean, like Gary Lineker. you got all the, the Messies and all that one, and um, Lewis Figo. Yeah. And, uh, Lewis Figo. Man. That's a controversial oh. transfer, isn't it? <laughs> when he went to um, Real Madrid, Real Madrid the, the first game he played there, they, they chucked a pig's head yeah. and a full bottle of whiskey on the <laughs> pitch at him. <laughs> but um, you've got the other players there, haven't you? But Gary Lineker, I mean, I'm a Spurs man, aren't I? Yeah. So when he, you know, when he was I there, like him as well. It's like managers. I mean, managers, I, I, there's a few managers that's been there. Bobby Robson. Yes. Oh, and who is his assistant? Well, the chosen one, isn't it? Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho, yeah. But my favourite manager of all time for Barcelona? I another, don't know. Another English one, Terry Venables. Really? Yes. Oh, really? Terry I, see, I would have thought you'd have preferred Bobby Robson over Terry No, no. Because Terry... Terry Venables, for, to me, he was a Spurs manager as well, but he was also an England manager. Yeah, he was very good England manager. And I manager. thought at yeah, the so time... Yeah, Bobby Robson. Well, yeah, but for me, it's Spurs and right, England. Right, OK, yeah. For me, at the time, when he was England manager, I thought at the time we were probably playing the best football of ever, and, and tactically-wise, he had everything right. Yeah. We were just so unlucky at the time. Yeah. So he, he's always been one of my favourite managers. Yeah, I mean, let's and, not talk about Euro 96, because apparently we talk about it too much, yeah. but still... <laughs> <laughs> so in the few games that we have played before we've started off really well yet again start, a 3-0 yeah. victory against Sevilla a 5-0 victory against Sporting we've played against Juve in a friendly and we battered them 4-0 so we're looking really strong Mbappe got a hat-trick Depay got two in that Sporting game and in the Sevilla game Isaac's got two so we already can see the competition starting yeah. again for this next season come on we're going to do this yes come on final season let's see how we do So the final season, Barcelona win it again. And we're back to being comfortable well. winning yeah. the league as well. So I think we've won it four out of five times. So that's definitely, yeah. in the league terms, that's definitely a success. Kylian Mbappe gets the most goals. He wins that golden boot for us. 61 appearances. But there is, obviously, we need to win something else, don't we? That Champions League. That was I'm the big confident. thing. I'm you think? Yeah, then. I mean, yeah. we've definitely got the squad for it. That was the final goal. And we have managed to yes, do it. Again. We've got revenge on PSG. And we won we the cup as well got the treble done the treble we've done the treble a 6-2 win against PSG that is a phenomenal result to yeah. be honest I don't think Messi's there anymore no, probably been but still Mbappe he scored 5 oh. Mbappe got 5 in a Champions League final against in his PSG. former club I yeah. bet he was Buzzing. Oh, absolutely. And then, of course, Pedri, of course, who, who came from the Youth Academy. So that's a lovely little end there to uh, what is a fantastic rebuild, yeah. in my opinion. That's got to be one of our best ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much for watching. Remember, write your comments down below who you think we should do next. And maybe you should watch this video after this one. Thank you very much. Bye bye.